I'm recording again. You don't have to rush back. <clears throat> Uh, da, da. Something I wanted to tell you guys before I continue. We have these seven hormones, and then I'm just going to go over again. All of these hormones work on negative feedback, except for two of them. Um, this one and that one. So we used the example of TSH earlier. You know, like when the process is fine, you know, like when everything's fine, then there's no more process. That's negative feedback. Right. Once the negative thing is has been mitigated or <coughs> nullified or whatever, the process stops. That's not the actual definition of negative feedback, but you get what I'm saying. The circle stops. There's two pieces where you have to tell it to stop. Stop producing as much prolactin. Stop producing as much human growth hormones. So those are the two types. So just like we had releasing hormones, for here there's inhibiting hormones. There's one called prolactin inhibiting hormone, just like we had prolactin releasing hormone. And we have growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So these, do, these two do not work on negative feedback. In fact, PIH is called, another name for PIH is called dopamine. So sometimes they will give dopamine to slow down the whole childbirth deal. Because dopamine is PIH. And then the other word for GIH, um, somato. Somato means growth. And then the other part of the word, statin. You could kind of look at the, the word statin as like, this is, I'm not telling you exactly right information, but statin kind of means, you could kind of mean to stop, like stopping growth. So when you see the word statin, statin in something or static, like static, statin is like static, you know, like not doing anything. So not doing anything, is, and some out of means growth as far as like growth. So GHIH, we also call that somatostatin so that's that's for example that's taken in certain types of cancers it'll talk it'll stop certain like what we call like neuroendocrine tum tumors from growing anyway so yeah yeah and you might be thinking so here's like something else you might be thinking dopamine is that chemical that makes you feel all good and stuff but, but here it's not sounding like that. It's sounding like it's stopping the production of breast milk. Yeah, hormones and all chemicals in your body, they've got different gigs, right? They don't just have a full-time gig. They've got a bunch of weekend. Working in your body doesn't pay anything. So they got to get, they need other jobs. So don't think of chemicals as having just like one job. I don't know if something's wrong, but I can barely hear you. Everything really? you're saying is breaking up. Oh. <clears throat> My internet's connection looks okay. Am I breaking up now? Still? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I still am. That might be yours because he's not breaking up on my end. You might have to log out and log back in. Yeah, mine either. I can hear him very well. You get that, Demi? The whole problem's you and not me. <laughs> I'm gonna. T I'm gonna text her. How do I do that? See, I don't even know how to do that on this thing. I need to switch to. Um, oh, she left. She. I think she figured it out. 
I need to <clears throat> switch. I'm going to try to switch to Zoom. Hey, Demi, can you hear us? Yeah. Anyway. Um, I could have sworn we had a chat in here. Oh, yeah, it's right here. So, um, go back. By the way, what kind of, um, if, if you're not getting like a full picture, if you're just getting like a little picture of me in there, you can like, um, hover over it and then pin, pin it and it should go larger. I hope. I hope it's recording that way. We'll find out. What? No. Now she can't hear anything. Hey, but the rest of you, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> Me embarrassing her online. All right, I'm gonna close that. All right, let me go back. All right, I wonder what this will. If I put a filter on, no, I don't want the filter. Not the filter. Got it. It keeps sending me notifications. All right, um, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. Oh, you remember that example of glucagon and insulin? They're doing opposite things. Glucagon raises blood sugar. Insulin lowers blood sugar. Those are antagonistic hormones, right? That's that type of hormone interaction. They're antagonizing each other. They're doing opposite things. Uh, I don't want this. I don't want that. All right. So, we talked about, <clears throat> that kind of sums up a lot of the anterior pituitary. Some of those hormones, like the thyroid and stuff like that, I'm going to talk about later Probably, maybe not today, I don't know. Um, and then, um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. So we'll, we'll get to steroids. We'll talk about steroids by next class. We'll talk about thyroid hormones. Um, maybe today, but maybe not. And um, same thing with uh, FSH and LH. So for now, I want to look at the other side and they the, the posterior pituitary and they call the posterior pituitary B the nickname for it no no wait I got this Neuro hypo. So that word hypothesis means pituitary gland. Neuro meaning posterior. It doesn't mean posterior. It sounds like neural, like neurology, like brain, because it is. It's it's there's not see with the anterior side. There were hormones that were released here, and these hormones went into the blood and came down to here in the blood. On the posterior side, it's all through neurons. So this posterior pituitary doesn't 
make any hormones. It doesn't make any hormones. It holds on, it stores two hormones that the um, hypothalamus makes. They are, name slipped my mind, hold on, antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. Those are the two hormones that are released, not made, but released by the posterior pituitary. So this is much easier. This is much easier to deal with. The anterior pituitary was the difficult one. The posterior, much easy for us, much easier for us to, to deal with. So let's talk about these two hormones. Eventually. Um, and again, I'm going to go off and I'm going to go back on. So let me do the whiteboard. Let's start with oxytocin. Good. Let's start with oxytocin. Up arrow means increase because I'm lazy. Oxytocin does more than what I'm saying. Oh, Damaris, you're presenting. Sorry, you're not. Oxytocin increases uterine contractions, and it does something called the letdown reflex. Meaning like milk ejection into the ducts. So that's kind of it. I mean... I'm not going to say, that's the main, the two main things oxytocin does, right? It's, all of this is like way more complicated, right? But I'm just giving you a couple things. That's that. That's oxytocin. They might write it sometimes as oxy, but actually this one they usually, or they might put OT, but um, uh, more times they'll write it out. Right? That's why I wrote it out. This one is ADH. Oh, and the other name for this, ADH, a, a, a definite name, you should know the other name, vasopressin. All right, so let's talk about, I'm switching gears for a second because I want to talk about this hormone. But before I talk about this hormone, I want to talk about like how your body deals with blood pressure because that's what this is getting at, right? And so your body has a lot of mechanisms to raise blood pressure, but we don't really have, we have very few mechanisms to lower blood pressure because we're not built that way. We're built for a world where it's really hard to find water and you're gonna have to like make your own spear and you're gonna have to kill a wild boar and that boar might might cut you up while you're trying to kill it, and you might start bleeding. That's the world that we're, we have to deal with. There's not a lot of water. Hogs are cutting you with their tusks. Zombies, all that stuff. That's what the body's built for. Um, so it's not built, it's not built to handle the McDonald's drive through across the street from Nunez, where it looks like there's no cars, but it's really a split lane. And then I get in there, and I'm like, damn, there's a bunch of cars here. I try to back out, and I can't back out, and it's too late. So it's not built for that. <clears throat> so our body's built to raise blood pressure. Raising blood pressure. So... The, the, the reason that you're going to um, get a low blood pressure, because that's the danger, low blood pressure. Why are you going to get low blood pressure? Um, blood loss. Or fluid loss. But fluid loss equals blood loss, which equals 
flow, flood, pressure. So they're related. How much water you have in your body is related to how much blood is physically in your body. Not really the red blood cells, we're talking about plasma. <clears throat> right? So when you drink a lot of water, you literally have more blood in your body. And when you're dehydrated, you literally have less blood in your body. So when you have more blood, your blood pressure can go up. When you have less blood, your blood pressure can go down. And so you might say, well, if I just keep drinking water, won't my blood pressure just keep going up, up, up? No, because your kidneys are there. Your kidneys can take water and urinate. That's why when you drink a lot of water, your urine is like clear. You don't have to flush. Bonus. But if you didn't drink a lot, your urine's nasty, yellow, smelly. That's a sign. Something's wrong with you. If your urine looks like beer, you've been drinking too much beer. So in that case, your blood pressure will start to go down if you get too dehydrated. So you want to you stop. I really meant to put volume. Let me put this a different way. Water intake means increased blood volume equals increased blood pressure. <coughs> the opposite works. You don't take in enough water, meaning like you're drinking too much beer, the alcohol is a diuretic. I know you're like, well, if you're drinking, no, you're drinking a diuretic. You're drinking a diuretic, so no. So you didn't take in enough water, meaning your blood volume is low because you're, you don't have as much plasma in your body. Therefore, your blood pressure goes down. So if you drink enough, your blood volume stays up, and your blood pressure stays up. Don't drink enough. I've seen this so many times. This is very common during Mardi Gras. People don't drink enough. Blood volume goes down. They've been doing it for a couple days. They're drinking, they're just not drinking water. And then their blood pressure goes down and they pass out. Right, and then the answer to that is to stick an IV in them, shove a bunch of water back in them, <clears throat> they'll be fine. But your body has a way to do this itself. By the time those people pass out, because they didn't, they're dehydrated, they're, their compensatory mechanisms have already failed them. One of these ways to compensate is antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone does two things. One thing that it does, tell kidneys to make less urine. <clears throat> to be particular about that, don't put a lot of water in urine if you don't have a lot of water to spare. You haven't been drinking water, you're dehydrated. You still got to make pee. You just have to. Because you got to get all that crap out of your blood. But just put the bare, bare minimum amount of water in there just to get it out. And that's why it looks all nasty, yellow, dark yellow. But you also notice we have this other word that it's more commonly called vasopressin, vasopressin. And it, um, it presses on your blood vessels. This kind of doesn't have a lot to do with what we're, um, this chapter, but it will the next chapter. So pretend that's a blood vessel, right? And it's got a bunch of blood in it. What happens if I take this? and I squeeze it. What happens to the pressure inside of the blood? I'm squeezing this thing, the pressure of the blood's gonna go up, right? And then I let it go, and it goes down. So when I constrict my blood vessels, when I press on my blood vessels, pressure goes up. When I don't press on them, I dilate them, pressure goes down. Very easy way for your body to get blood pressure up. 
squeeze all the blood vessels, pressure goes up. So that's what it does. It, it's called, we, call, we call it vasoconstriction. So I'll put this as number one. Number two. Vasoconstriction. So, decrease the amount of water that is used to make urine. That's what your kid your kidneys can do that. Your kidneys choose how much water it wants to use when it's making your urine. <clears throat> and it helps you constrict your blood vessels. And a third one, which is not like a big deal. I'll put it on, but I don't care if you don't talk about it ever again. Decrease the amount of sweat that comes out. Forgot to admit. My bad. Um. Yeah. So. <clears throat> But this is, a, this is kind of a, you know, this is dangerous. Because if it's hot outside and you're sweating, but you're dehydrated, and now you don't want to make any sweat, then you're going to heat up so much faster, which is going to kill you off that much sooner, right? So this is a tricky one. I like to, your book and the slides are going to have it. I like to leave it out because it kind of all depends. This is a very easy one to do. Constrict your blood vessels. That's very easy. That'll get your blood pressure up really quick. And this is easy to do too, to make less urine. This is fast, right? This happens right away. It's gonna take a little while before you pee again, right? But you don't wanna be wasting water that you need because you're not drinking enough. So that's what it is, anti-diuretic. It's not gonna, it's going against diuresis, against diuretics. Anti-diuretic hormone. Hospitals call it that, I think. Pretty sure. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's made by your. That is made by your. And posterior pituitary. I'm looking at the time. I really like this place. I, I like this spot to end everything. Yeah, I want to end it here. This is a good place to end it. All right. Any questions on anything so far? Because I want to review. I want to talk about. I want to summarize what we've talked about. <clears throat> All right. You guys can hear me, right? Everything's good? Yes. Yeah. One. We didn't really go over that in class, so I'm kind of doing it now. <clears throat> they are permissive, meaning that one hormone gives permission to another. Uh, if you look on the video, it's on there. They are synergistic. They work together. Or... antagonistic, meaning they don't work together. They work against each other. I might ask you a question, which would be pretty easy, about up regulation or down regulation. That just means adding more receptors or not adding more receptors. Why would you want to decrease the amount of receptors you have? Or why would you want to increase the amount of receptors you have? Maybe there's more of the hormone, too much of it. Maybe there's not enough of it. So adding receptors, decreasing receptors, 
talked about that. Uh, <clears throat> this is going to be the worst question for you guys. If I ask it, I'm going to ask it. The mode of action of hormones. Lipid and water. You need to explain it. If you are telling if you are telling it to me or telling it to somebody else, they ask you, what do hormones actually do? I know what hormones are. Like I know testosterone is a hormone, but how do all these hormones actually, what do they actually do? And then you're going to tell them, well, it changes the behavior of the cell. How? That'll be the next question because they're so interested. And then you say, well, that depends on what kind of hormone it is. If it's lipid soluble, that's pretty easy. The hormone's gonna go in, it's gonna go into the nucleus, and it's gonna alter genetic expression or something to that effect. Right? I don't care, I don't care about exact exact wording on most of this. Like if you I don't care if you put alters genetic expression. If you understand what's going on, then I'm happy. And I'm more likely to be okay with like spelling errors or something, or if you miss something, like you didn't add a detail, like I'm okay because I see that you understand, right? You understand the idea that the hormone goes in and it goes into the DNA and it changes, that it like turns genes on and off, right? You know what it does. It's just that you're not really good at explaining it. I understand that. But, if you memorize G protein, you know, receptor, G protein, adeno, like you, you better get it all right because you're not explaining it. I can tell that you only memorized words and you're putting the words back down. So then you better be correct on all of it, right? But if I know that you know that there's like this process, you know, that the hormone can't actually get into the cell, and so it has to trigger a bunch of stuff. This is the long one, right? That's the adenylate cyclase and, and protein kinases and that word. Let's say you forget the word, that long ass word, whatever it was, phosphorylate. You, you forgot the word phosphorylate. I don't care because you understand what's going on. And instead you say, well, these enzymes are going to, you know, it gives energy to these enzymes. You didn't use the word phosphorylate. You said it gives energy to these enzymes. Fine. Like you get what's going on. So this was the long one. This was a difficult one. Um, it's in that video. It's in your book, of course. Um, it's a, it's, it's a, it's just a chemical pathway that you, that you've got to learn. And it's going to, for those of you taking like pharmacology, it's going to come back like the pathways, right? And th this one with the G protein, this is a, like the most complex of them, or like when you understand that one, you'll get the other ones too. They'll come up in later classes. Or if you have to take molecular biology or something like that, your cell biology, you're probably going to have to learn them. Right? So you're getting an example of it here. The mode of action. And the ending of it is that here on the, with the water soluble, you're, you're changing the DNA, you're changing the genetics, you're, you're flipping the genes on and off. That's what's making the cell act differently. With the other side that I didn't, I didn't write all of that, but that G protein, all of that, you're changing enzymes. You're activating enzymes and enzymes are gonna change the, the way the cell behaves. Hormones of the pituitary, sorry, the anterior pituitary. You've got to know all seven. This is just memorizing, really.
question or not? Yeah, I should probably just turn this off. So, I might ask you a question like this. List the hormones of the anterior pituitary gland and the cells that made them. Or I could say, List the hormones of the anterior pituitary gland and the releasing hormones from the hypothalamus. Make sure you match them up. And don't put everything, like if I didn't ask about the cells, don't put the cells. That just shows me you memorized a bunch of words and you're going to throw all the words back on the paper no matter what I say. Right? That you really don't know that growth hormone, releasing hormone, it's going to cause the release of human growth hormone. Like, you don't even know that. You don't know the relationship between TRH and TSH. You just memorize everything, you throw it on there. In my mind, that's like, oh, TSH, that causes the release of a somatotropin. Like, you don't know. You just wrote a bunch of words, right? So, whatever I ask, just answer that. <laughs> that's number four. I'm going to erase this. Come on. We just went over it. I'll, I mean, in particular, I'm going to be asking you about probably antidiuretic hormones. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add a sixth one in here. <clears throat> Even my chair. So, that's your quiz. I'm going to ask you five of these questions. You know the it's not multiple choice. You're going to have to write this stuff out. However, you know what I'm going to ask you. Hey, if you have someone that took the class before, go get their old quiz. It's not a secret, and you're not getting over on me. If you know it, you know it. So if you know all this, you know a lot about the endocrine system already. Um, so I want you to understand, this is really about understanding. I want you to understand the idea of what do we do with our carbohydrates and what do we do with our, our fats, our lipids that we, that we eat? What do we do with our proteins, right? If you don't, if you kind of understand what's going on, but you don't get like everything perfect, I don't care. I just want you to, I want to know that you have an understanding of what goes on. And by doing these longer, longer answers, where you have to write stuff out, that gives me, that gives me um, a chance to grade you easier. If I put it in multiple choice and it's wrong, it's wrong. Right? But here I get to, you know, I, I have some leeway. But if you're just slapping down, because I'm putting here, these are going to be like explain. Like number six, explain it. I want you to write it out in sentences. You can't put a bunch of words. You can't put, I don't know, IGF, lipolysis, AA. That's nothing. That means nothing to me. You just put down three words and it doesn't mean anything. I want you to explain it to me. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just explain it to me. Just tell me like you were telling someone else.
Like if your parent asks you, hey, hey, what'd you learn in school today? Shut up, mom. But if you were to really answer, you'd be like, oh, well, I learned how growth hormone works. Oh, really? What's it do? I'll make shit grow. Well, how does it do that? Oh, well, glad you asked. See, we need protein. Protein makes shit grow. And then we need some energy source to make that all work. And we get that energy from like our carbohydrates. So we get it from like increased glucose in our blood. And then we break up fat. We call that lipolysis. That means breaking up fat. And we're going to take all that and make ATP out of it. And use the ATP to get all the proteins and make new stuff out of protein like new bone and new cartilage and new everything. So that's what I mean. How are we raising blood pressure? That's really what this is about, antidiuretic hormone. Why do we care? Why do we care if we're, you know, if, if, if we don't have a lot of fluid in our body, if we're dehydrated? So what? What does dehydrated mean? What, so my skin's going to get a little dry? No, you, your blood pressure is going to plummet. And you can't get oxygen around your body and stuff. That's, what dehyd that's the danger of being dehydrated. So, so your body tries to defend against that. That's what antidiuretic hormone does. In a couple of weeks, you're going to have some other stuff, too, that we're going to talk about with blood pressure. Um, that's not hard. That's a list. Right? There's nothing to explain. It's just a list. We made the list, memorize the list, regurgitate the list. That's number four. Regurgitate the list. So in that way, it's an easy question. You gotta just memorize it. Just keep writing it down, keep writing it down until you have it. <clears throat> Don't write it down on. Hold on, I'm checking the time. Don't write it down on like tomorrow night and be like, okay, I got it. No, because you never, you want to put it in your permanent memory. Write it down tonight, today. You'll forget a little bit of it tomorrow. So tonight you want to be like, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Tomorrow you're going to forget a little bit. Write it down again. By Wednesday you're good. You're good to go. That's your killer. Prepare that. Write that down on paper today. Explain it. Explain it today. And explain it again tomorrow. Write it out. You, if you think you could just swipe your phone through this class, you're, you're, it's not happening. Right? And except for Demi, who's going to be a, a billion coding, she's the only one I have any mercy for in here. The rest of you, you need this. Even if you're not going into, like, nursing, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to go into radiology. You need this still. Sorry. They're giving it to you again. Right? I'm not teaching you nursing. I'm just teaching you shit that you're going to have again in another class. So um, that's going to be your hard one. Easy. Easy, easy. So I'll ask five of those six. Get 100 on it. It's a lot easier for me when you're either 100 or zero. You know, it, those are really easy for me to grade. So if you're not going to think of yourself, at least think of me. I prefer the hundreds because it makes me feel good. But, you know. So try to write everything else. Try to write everything out well and get 100 and come into this thing with a really good grade. <clears throat> and then quiz three, you can kind of blow off. So you guys have any questions on anything? Let me stop recording. This might come in two parts. <clears throat>